everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today I am going to show you a delicious soup to make when you have some leftover ham. And if you don't have leftover ham, maybe you just want to go buy a little chunk of ham to make this soup because the soup is delicious and it's so easy. In this pot I have some, a little can, I'm going to add a box of just chicken stock to that. I've got it over like medium high heat for the moment. And I'm going to add some carrots. They've got three carrots here that I've already peeled. If you wanted to use like frozen um, carrots, by all means you can. And I like to cut them into, you know, bite-sized pieces. So we're just going to cut them into little pieces. This is one of those things that, you know, oftentimes when you cook a ham for dinner, um, you got a lot of leftovers. Most hams are pretty big unless you buy, you know, a very small ham. Ham freezes beautifully for leftovers, like for soups and things like that. So that's what this is. This is just some leftover ham that I put in the freezer. You can go ahead and cube it if you want to before you freeze it or you can just freeze it and then cube it when you're ready. If you don't have leftover ham, the grocery stores do sell a little, I, I, I think they're about maybe half a pound or a pound of just diced up ham. Or you could use uh, Canadian bacon, which is basically ham um, that you can buy in the grocery store. You could use country ham, you could use deli ham probably not the best choice if, it, if it's thin cut but you could get it cut real thick from the deli you know like a big chunk whatever you have is fine you can mix up the vegetables any which way that you like um, typically most vegetable soups or soups in general will start with uh, celery, carrots, and onion. Now, I'm not going to add any celery to mine today because I don't have any. But if you have celery, by all means, add a little bit of celery to your soup. This is one of those recipes that you truly can customize to your liking. But I do want to add some carrots. My mother, when I was growing up, and I've made it for you before here on the program, anytime there was leftover ham, she would make a split pea soup, which I absolutely love. Using, uh, let me move my trash can over here a little bit, using uh, dried split peas. Ooh, that onion does not look the best in the world in there, does it? So what we're gonna do, you never know till you cut it open, is take that part out. The rest of it's still okay. You never know when you cut uh, an onion, what's going to look like inside. And that's true for potatoes too sometimes. You just never know. So we'll have to be careful with this because it's going to be harder to cut since there's no solid piece. So we'll just probably have to do this one in rings. They do sell in the freezer department of your grocery store um, beginnings, soup beginnings or soup vegetables or um, starter type things, which is pretty much onions chopped. Sometimes it has celery. Sometimes it might have green pepper. So if you don't like to chop your vegetables, you can buy those. It's fine in soup. I don't mind chopping vegetables. I actually kind of find it therapeutic in a strange way. I don't know why. I just do. I really actually think that's all I'm going to need. I don't think I'm going to need any more onions, so I don't need this onion. I'll save it for something else. Now, we're going to add some salt, about a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of dried thyme, and I'm going to add some freshly ground pepper. some fresh ground pepper, stir that up. It really could not be simpler. Then we're going to cut up our ham. Again, I have, you know, just some hunks of ham. 
This is already cooked, so I don't mind putting it on my board. If it, you know, ham is cooked. I don't put raw meat. As you know, you've heard me say so many times, I do not put raw meat on my wooden cutting boards. I know you can sanitize it with soapy water, but I just feel weird about doing that. I'm gonna chop my ham. It's actually still a little bit cold. I took it out of the freezer about an hour ago. This was uh, a spiral cut. Actually, it was our Easter ham. It was spiral cut. You can usually get I don't know, out of a, a decent sized ham, you can get, you know, five or six meals out of that thing. So it really is, your initial investment may be a little more, but it's very, very useful for many different things. So what I do oftentimes with my leftover, if I have a lot of leftover ham, is I will go ahead and portion it out and put it in, um, like little Ziploc bags and freeze it for different meals. Makes, you, you could do omelets, you can do frittatas, you could do soups, you can do sandwiches, you can do many, many different things with leftover ham. If you don't have ham, you could substitute uh, maybe, you know, like a, a, I don't know, maybe some turkey if you had leftover turkey. You would not get that same smoky that you're going to get from the ham but it would be good I just think this soup is just ham and bean to me sometimes I make a bean soup with dried beans today we're not doing that we're talking convenience here we're talking getting your dinner on the table very very quickly I like my hams to be kind of you know bigger chunks not real tiny little chunks not in this soup you want a good mouthful in your bite okay add your ham this really is easy kind of a dump and simmer you could put all this in your crock pot in the morning and then when you get home from work or your day your dinner is done okay i'm going to stir that up mm smelling good already. I'm going to add two cans of Great Northern Beans. I'm not draining them because I want that liquid. It's just a starchy water. It'll help kind of add a little body and thickness to the soup. And then one can of cannellini beans. Of course, you could add whatever kind of bean that you have in your pantry. If you've got navy beans, it's delicious in there. If you've got... Um, pinto beans or kidney beans or black beans. You can add any kind of bean that you like. And that's it. That just needs to simmer for like an hour. Um, I'm going to bring it up to a, a good boil and then I'm going to simmer it. I'm going to clean up my board. When I come back, I'm going to start on our dessert, which is a red raspberry cake bar. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now our soup is simmering away. You could add a bay leaf to that. You could add some dried sage to that. Would really bring out those flavors if you wanted to. Um, now, we're gonna get started on a very, very easy red raspberry square. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And I have here a 13 by nine inch pan. In this bowl, I have one box cake mix, this the, the yellow cake mix that, I like the ones that have like the pudding or the moist, the extra moisture in them. I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna actually whisk my egg up a little bit before I add it into the, this is not going to be like the traditional, um, cake batter. This is actually going to be a crumbly, crumbly, uh, thicker mixture. Now you might need to add a little bit more melted butter if your cake, you know, it, it really, anytime you're baking, it depends on the, 
It depends on the humidity of your day, of your room that you're in. And I actually do think I need just a tiny, tiny bit more butter in that. So let me uh, get a little bit more butter. Melt it real quick. Can melt it uh, in your microwave. I'm going to add about another tablespoon. Let's go over here. I love a microwave for melting butter. Just don't forget it and let it pop. You know how it'll just, that water will just start bursting into the microwave. Had that happen many times, this morning included. Let's see. You got to watch it just a second. You could use uh, chocolate if you wanted to here. Yeah, it's good enough. That melted it. You could use chocolate. Uh, chocolate and raspberries go great together. You could use anything you wanted, really. I just like the flavor of the butter mixture. Now, again, you're making the base for this. I'm going to add about half a cup of just chopped up pecans because that's what I have, but you could use almonds, you could use um, walnuts, you could use, you know, pretty much anything you wanted to, any kind of a nut. If you don't want to use nuts in there, then you don't have to. And I'm still, it's very, very, very humid in here, so, I mean, not humid, but dry, so I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of water to mine. Probably just a couple of tablespoons, and that will be good. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, you want this to be crumbly. You see how that's just nice and crumbly? We're going to put this in the bottom of our bowl. Okay. Then we're going to take our spatula or your hands, either one. I'm actually just going to use my hands. And you want to press it out into the bottom of the uh, pan. My hands are sticking to the mixture. So let's do this a different way. Spray the bottom of your spatula. And help yourself along a little bit. Okay, you just want to spread it out evenly in your pan. That's going to be your base for your um, bars. Then you're going to take a, a jar of red raspberry preserves. This particular one is seedless because I couldn't find any with the seeds. And I actually really like raspberry anything. Raspberry is one of my favorite, what well, probably next to peaches is my favorite fruit. I could just sit and eat a whole package of raspberries on their own and actually do that quite often. I love them. They're good and they're good for you. You want to spread that lightly over top of your base evenly, just all over. Okay. And then we're going to bake this at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes or so. Or until it's golden and cooked through. And then we will make a glaze to go on it. So let's put this in our top oven here at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. Somebody will set me a timer. Let me wash up my hands. And then we're going to make a glaze to go on top of that because every little bar needs a glaze. Come on, soap. There we go. Okay, now, for your topping for this, get rid of some of my mess here. 
for our glaze, we need some powdered sugar, some water, and a little bit of vanilla extract. You could use almond extract if you wanted to. If you have raspberry extract, you could use that. I'm just going to use vanilla. I'm going to use all of it because that I like the flavor of vanilla. And then you want to stir in a couple of spoons full of either water or milk. And then stir that until it comes together. Let's see if I got a little whisk over here. I do. Might need to add a little more water. Yeah, probably about another spoonful. Don't add too much water at first because then it just gets thick. And that comes together into a beautiful glaze that when our cake comes out of the oven or our bars come out of the oven, we will drizzle this over top of it. So we're just going to set that to the side until it's time to get that out of the oven. I'm going to clean up my mat. I am the messiest little cook. I'm going to clean this up, take a quick break. When I come back, we are going to make a Johnny cake, which is kind of like a fried cornbread patty. We'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now your bars will be done when a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. I took mine out of the oven and I actually just popped mine in my freezer just to cool down real quick so we could glaze them. While we're, while we're waiting on that, the soup is ready. We're just going to make some fried Johnny cakes, which are kind of like a cornbread pancake, if you will. I've got here some oil just canola oil that's preheating and we're going to mix up our batter. I have a cup of cornmeal, cornbread mix, a cup of self-rising flour, which is not something I use real often, but sometimes I just think it's better, it's easier. So let me whisk that up, let me grab a, a little whisk. The self-rising flour already has your salt, your leavening agents, your baking powder, baking soda, and all that in it. All right. Then I'm going to add one and a half cups of buttermilk. Now, buttermilk is not something I keep in my pantry at all times, but they do make powdered buttermilk, and that's what I have here. You will need whatever your package calls for to equal one and a half cups. Now, if you, you know, have fresh buttermilk, by all means, use fresh buttermilk. I'm going to add an egg to that, just one egg. And I'm going to lightly beat that egg. And then I'm going to add that to my dry mixture. I'm also going to add some melted butter, about a stick of melted butter to that. And then we're going to stir that all together till it forms a batter. I'm going to try not to get it all over myself, making no promises on that. I am just a messy cook, just the way it is. If you'll let this set for a minute, it will hydrate and come together as a nice batter. Okay. Now we need to let our water come up to a temperature. While that's, let's check on our soup. 
while that's doing its thing. Look at that pot of soup. Oh, that looks so good and it smells divine. Again, if you have some bay leaves, you could add a bay leaf. You could add um, some dried sage. You could add really anything you wanted to that. That's ready to go. I've just got that on simmer. Absolutely delicious. All right, to your mixture, you want to add some shredded cheddar cheese. Mm, 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 mm. I think my oil is plenty hot. Let's drop a little tiny piece in there just to see. Yeah, that's good. All right. I like to do it just with a little scoop and a spoon. You want to drop into your frying oil, just like you would be cooking pancakes. If you want to do this on a griddle, you can. Okay, turn that down just a little bit. If you use a scoop, then they kind of all come out the same size. I'm going to fry them three at a time. They fry pretty quick. Once they get brown on one side, then you want to flip it over without hurting yourself. A little testy, I left him in there too long. Okay, just like you would be cooking pancakes. They don't take long to cook. Flatten them out just a little bit. About two or three minutes on this second side. And you're good to go. Alrighty, now, here are our Johnny Cakes. I wanted to show you these are the big ones, or you can make little, small, um, little handheld size. Either way, it, it doesn't matter, however you want to cook them. Now, remember our bar that we made and our glaze? Now it's time to glaze. You want to make sure this is chilled, and you want to take your glaze that you made with the powdered sugar, the water, and I used vanilla extract. I don't like a whole, whole lot of glaze. If you want to have more sweetness, then you can um, double the amount. I'm not a real big glazy person. I am the odd person who likes cinnamon rolls without the glaze. So, you know, you make more if you want. For me, I'm just not a big glaze. I like some, just not a lot. You just want to make sure it's drizzled all over your bars. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, um, just cut them into bars and serve them. You know, they make great, uh, if you want, uh, they make great little snacks or desserts. Great with a cup of coffee. If you want to keep what you don't eat, just cut them into bars and Put them in Ziploc bags and there you go. They're ready to go. Or just cover the whole thing with foil and eat it as you want to, however you want to do it. You could top that with a little bit of powdered sugar too if you wanted to. Either way, here is our delicious, delicious soup. Let me just bring it up here. Our soup that you could totally make in a crock pot. 
if you wanted to. Just put all of your ingredients in your crock pot in the morning and let it go on low all day or high for like three to four hours and you're good to go. So there's our delicious soup. Now you could, again, add some celery, add some sage, add some a bay leaf, just remove the bay leaf before you serve it. You could add some peas if you wanted to use like the frozen cut up peas and carrots, you could add that. I used cannellini beans and great northern beans, but you could use navy beans, pinto beans, black beans, whatever kind you want. Then here are our fried Johnny cakes. Again, I made some of them the big size and some of them the small, I just wanted to show you. You just let them brown on one side, flip them over, and then you might need to flip them back and forth a couple of different times. Just be careful because the oil is very hot. They are really good. You could actually serve those for breakfast with uh, some syrup and butter drizzled over them. They would be fine like that, but they make a great little accompaniment to some soup. So here you go. This is a great recipe to use up some leftover ham or, you know, ham that you just purchased specifically for making this soup. Mix it up, customize it to your taste, whatever kind of beans you like. I use chicken broth, but you could use vegetable broth. You could actually make this vegetarian if you wanted to leave out the ham and use vegetable broth and just make a soup. I would bump up, maybe add some lentils or some, uh, you know, more vegetables to that. That'd be great with some fennel in it too. And our Johnny Cakes and our delicious, delicious raspberry bars. Thank you for joining with me and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Yeah,